toujours l'audace. <coughs> Hi, I'm Ted Nelson, here to tell you about a document system I've been working on a long time. A system that most people haven't understood, with visible connections between pages. Every, connect, every quotation connected to its source, and a copyright system that allows the mixing of free and paid content. Why haven't people understood it? Because it's too many concepts at once, even though they condense into one simple, unified idea. People seem to think we're competing with the World Wide Web. No. The web was a fork of our project back in the day. But now we're competing with PDF and doc format for a new kind of document you can write, distribute, and connect directly without jumps into unknown hyperspace. Why haven't people been able to use it? Well, there have been lots of prototypes. You can see four of them at Xanadu.com, but we haven't had a working system anyone could use with their own new documents until now. Well, today I'm going to show you a system you can open and use. We don't have a good editor yet, but with a little determination, you can make a Xanadoc on your own and send it out to people, and they can view it in a browser, which is very ironic. Here we have a Xanadoc. Right now, it's disguised as plain text. But if we want to see connections, here they are. The ones outlined in blue are Xana links. They aren't just jump links, what other people call hyperlinks. I've called them jump links since before the web. You're jumping to you know not where. It's a diving board into darkness. Whereas Xana links visibly connect to other content with a visible bridge. The other documents open and I can scroll around in them. When I click, I close them again by clicking. This is, of course, only one possible interface. And there are some beauties you can look at at xanadu.com. Now, what about connection to sources? What we've got here outlined in orange is content brought in from elsewhere, but it's not just a pasted quotation, it's a live connection to the original. So if the reader wants to scroll around, see the original context, or read further beyond that quotation, it's right there. These are live quotes, or what we call transclusions. How is this all done? It's very simple. The document is not a lump file. It's delivered as a list of pointers to contents, which your machine sends for, fulfilling the presentation on your screen. Let's close this document and look at the list behind it. It's called an Edit Decision List, or EDL, in the video industry, and that's what we call it, too. .edl or .xanadoc. We like them both. So you can open the Edit Decision List yourself here at xanadu.com. The Edit Decision List tells what portions to bring in and what links to apply. Using this list, you can open the Xanadoc we saw. Watch, I copy the contents. Now I'm pasting this list into the Xana Viewer. Click on Fulfill Document, and we wait a while. And we wait a little longer. And we just have confidence, and there's our Xanadoc with its connections. One more thing, as Steve Jobs used to say. Let's scroll down. Everything you've seen so far is working. Now for simulation of what we want to implement next, an easy micropayment system for content. We'll use the old literary term royalty, as in author's royalties, for what's paid to the rights holder. So royalty content doesn't come in until you pay for it. Here's our demonstration Xanadoc again. Here's a connection to an unpaid source. OK, let's scroll down further in our demonstration Xanadoc. What's this funny looking content down here that didn't seem to come in right? It looks tacky. It looks tacky on the source side, too. That's royalty content I need to pay for. It's from an academic journal that's offered with royalty content. My computer sees that the cost is an acceptably low payment by my criteria, seven cents, so it takes just one click to buy that content. Bringing in two paragraphs, here and here. So here's the first paragraph in my Xanadoc. 
mirrored in the source on the right. I've only bought 458 characters, that's all, and I can keep them. This is not pay-per-view. The rest of the article has not come in, but you can see where these paragraphs are relative to the rest of the article. You can, of course, read more of the article if you want, paying as you go a la carte. Is this fair or what? Now, anyone is free to put royalty content on their edit decision list without paying. Nobody controls the list, and it's the downloader who pays under trans copyright. Once again, is this fair or what? It's meant to be win-win all around. But a special advantage is that if I want to read more of that article or see the original context, I can go right to it, scroll up or down, paying tiny amounts as I go, or buy the whole article for 52 cents. That's much more reasonable than the high prices academic journals are trying now, but the academic journals are floundering. I want to save them. Of course, the provider gets to set the price and the reader gets to approve the purchase. Sale is by individual character, as fine grain as you can get. Just for calibration, 10 million nanobucks is one cent. I'd like to think big. Unlike other formats, we allow mixing of contents from many sources while keeping their identity and origin. Who else cares about that? And what is our copyright solution? There are lots of copyright licenses that don't allow mixing from different sources, and that's bad. We allow mixing of paid and unpaid content for legal mashup that rewards the artist. And this needs a completely different copyright doctrine, the trans copyright permission for content distributed not as lumps, but as lists to fulfill with new rights and possibilities. People ask, what's wrong with Creative Commons? Creative Commons is well-intentioned, but it's for lump files, and it's mainly a dignified way for the little guys and gals to give up hope of payment. We want to restore that hope on a reasonable basis. Another main question people ask, how do you keep the connected content from changing? The answer is simple. It can't. You have to stabilize the content, store it in a permanized form. This is a political problem more than a technical one because of the rights issues. <clears throat> okay, that's it. We're finally putting the pieces together end to end, but not yet polished. Feel free to use Xanadox now. Start at xanadu.com. You can create and distribute your own Xanadox and see them in your browser through our viewer or program your own viewer. We're working on a better editor. Meanwhile, you can select each span for your list with our span selector. Anyone with technical inclinations should be able to do this. Since this is an open specification, though still under development, anyone else is free to program to our specs, though not to use the Xanadu trademarks. The interface is going to be anything, unlike Microsoft Word, which gives you one column and a cursor. Once you understand the vast possibilities of this structure, interface becomes the main problem, especially since Xanadoc connection can go on and on forever. Right now, our viewer only works with text, one thing at a time. Most of what people call technology is constructs, artificial, imaginary constructs that people made up, directories, desktop, game, spreadsheet, all imagined constructs that people have dreamed up and implemented in the computer. Today I offer one more construct for your consideration. I hope people find it useful. We've had to throw out all the optimizations we worked on so hard back in the 20th century in order to downmap it to URL addressing. <sighs> Movable type took a lot of technical decisions, like matching the right lead alloy to the right sticky ink mixture toward the simple construct of the printed book. This project, too, has taken a lot of work for a similarly simple literary construct. I've never thought of this as technology, but rather as what electronic literature ought to be. Closing remarks. My personal thanks to my grandparents, Mr. and Mrs. Theodore Holm. To my wives, <clears throat> my wives Deborah, Marlene, and now Lauren. To my son Eric, to my Xanadu friends who have kept the faith since the debacle of the 1980s. Roger, Andrew, John, Jonathan, Nicholas, and now to Edward and his team for the work you've seen today. And to Frode, Frode, for the chance to give this talk. And thank you for watching.